as the Taliban move into Kabul, Western countries are moving out. They're using the airport to evacuate embassy staff and others desperate to leave. The United States is sending another 1,000 troops to assist with the U.S. evacuation effort. More than 60 countries have now signed a statement saying all Afghans and other citizens who want to leave Afghanistan must be allowed to depart. They say those in power are responsible for the protection of life and property and the restoration of order. Graham Satchel reports on the latest developments. On board a plane due to leave Kabul overnight, but at the last minute they're told the flight won't be going. Passengers are forced to rejoin the chaos outside. There is panic and fear everywhere. For 20 years, Afghanistan has had stability, democracy and relative safety. It's all ended in a matter of days. A lucky few have made it out. This is Delhi airport and a mix of relief, anger and despair. I can't believe the world abandoned Afghanistan. <laughs> Our friends are going to get killed. They're going to kill us. Our women are not going to have any more rights. The Taliban, forced from power by Western troops two decades ago, are back. They claim to have taken over every government department, including this, the presidential palace in Kabul. Just hours earlier, the former president, Ashraf Ghani, at the same desk. He's now fled to Uzbekistan. In a statement, he said he's left to avoid bloodshed. Kabul is a city on the move, residents desperate to escape. Fear of what is to come has gripped every level of society, including former government ministers. Deep down in my heart, I keep telling myself I won't have to pay the price for joining a government position. Um, but now I might, I might face consequences that I never even dreamed of. Uh, and I guess that's the price that we pay for trying to make this world a little better uh, than when we came to it, and particularly Afghanistan. British troops have now arrived in Kabul to evacuate UK nationals and Afghans who worked with them. It's thought around 4,000 in total are eligible to be airlifted out. Criticism of the chaos now engulfing Afghanistan is widespread. Parliament will be recalled on Wednesday to debate the crisis. A protest outside the White House in Washington. America has long argued its troops couldn't stay in Afghanistan forever and public opinion supports troop withdrawal. But serious questions are now being asked. Why was so much money spent, so many military lives lost, to simply allow the Taliban to walk back into power? The air over Kabul is full of helicopters as diplomats and embassy staff make their escape. On the ground, the people wait with growing fear. It was not meant to end like this. Graeme Satchel, BBC News. Well, let's speak to our South Asia correspondent, Ambarasan Etirajan, who's following developments from Delhi. Um, Ambarasan, firstly, um, the situation at the airport, um, it, it's, it was the very image of the very definition of, of chaos, it seemed. Um, what do we know about the evacuation efforts at the moment? You know, this is what everyone was fearing as and when this crisis unfolded, whether it is going to be an orderly withdrawal, smooth transfer of power, or it is going to be the situation what, we, what the world saw in South Vietnam in the 1970s. But now hundreds of people are desperately trying to get out of the country, fearing reprisals from the Taliban. And they're worried about their safety and security, but now all commercial flights have now been suspended because the US, the UK and others are evacuating their own nationals. So there are no flights going in and coming out of uh, Kabul at the moment, commercial flights. But many people want to go and some of them do have a visa. Some of them have residence permits in other countries, but many are simply coming there to find a way to get out of the country because of fear. You know, there was armed groups like gangs looting in the capital Kabul overnight. And I spoke to a couple of people who said, you know, they were really, really worried whether people can break into it because there was security forces simply fled overnight, fearing Taliban might attack them. And uh, a Taliban spokesman told me that they had sent their fighters inside the city to 
establish order, but that didn't give any confidence to people because they are worried about Taliban as well. So the chaos and confusion continues there and with uh, tens of thousands of people in Kabul, with no one in charge of the country, they are worried about their future, their life and what will happen to them next. And Ambarasan, for those who remain in Afghanistan, um, there are reports that in some parts of the country, the Taliban are also already enforcing changes to the way women dress, to their, whether they're able to go to work. And uh, in some cases, we hear they're turning them away from the gates of universities or, or schools. Um, is, is there any clarity on, on what the, the policy is and, and, and whether it's going to be uh, um, applied um, cohesively across the country or does it vary from region to region? I think the country is now at a point of transformation. Even the Taliban are now gradually taking over control. For example, like uh, they have uh, started their own radio broadcast and they're converting the state broadcasters into, you know, Taliban broadcast and moving into government offices and putting their own people. And many government officers, they just simply fled fearing reprisals. When I spoke to the Suhail Shaheen, the Taliban spokesman, and he denied all the charges about you know, women being abused. And he said, yes, women will go, can go to school, can go to universities, but with certain rules, like wearing the full veil with the burqa, and they would be allowed to be educated. Uh, but again, if the reports are true, what coming from the Taliban controlled areas, that nothing much has changed from what they were doing between 1996 and 2001 even about uh, the executions and the people being forced out of their homes. And many people are simply shot dead because they were part of the security forces. So these kind of accusations are still there. But the Taliban, they continue to keep denying this. OK, uh, Ambarasan, thank you very much indeed for the uh, update on that. Ambarasan Atirajan, they're monitoring developments uh, from Delhi. Well, I'm joined now from Afghanistan by a prominent women's rights campaigner who does not wish to reveal her identity. Um, thank you for speaking to us here on BBC News. What is the situation for women and girls today as they wake up in Afghanistan? Unfortunately, the today's situation in Afghanistan is exactly uh, taking us to the dark age of um, Taliban while they were controlling Afghanistan. Uh, at their time and unfortunately it's also uh, the same rules that they came uh, the, what they promised in Doha they didn't fulfill their promises they attacked they stopped women uh, in most of the provinces uh, from school and universities although publicly they announced that women and girls are allowed to go to school and university but when it comes to the reality they close the door for the, in the university and schools for women. When it comes to the women, big pictures on the walls of the beauty salons or anywhere else, they order that they should be either taking out or it's the faces needs to be covered. And again, they order a special kind of uh, clothes code for the women. And that's quite similar to burqa or either um, a long black dress, which is just only eyes can be uh, showing. Uh, this is just the beginning. This is, uh, uh, I think, they don't want to really show uh, the, their real face at the moment. But I believe when time comes, their real face will come up and they will again ask for their own same rules. Even when it comes to the security, I think uh, yesterday there was a lot of uh, case of um, organized crime, uh, target terror, and of course Taliban was searching for those prominent people that they were having on their hit list before. So that has made uh, life more difficult for women. Women in Afghanistan, especially women's rights activists, are really feeling themselves. Uh, first, we've been badly beaten. Uh, we've been we've been badly betrayed by international community, because and also by Taliban because Taliban said they will not enter to Kabul city, which is unfortunately they did. They say they will uh, respect women, but unfortunately in practice they did something totally uh, different. They say they will not uh, uh, start their own. Ta uh, 
Taliban type rules and regulation and laws that they had mm. uh, during 1996. But we are seeing is exactly the same. Yeah. Even the strange thing was they changed the national flag to the Taliban flag. Mm. It means they don't have any respect for any kind of interim government. They believe now it's the government of Taliban and their rules needs to be appealed on and, every single Afghan citizen. And, and with that in mind, as a prominent women's rights campaigner and activist, do you feel safe in any way at all? No, no, it's, it's, it's worse than what I thought because they are searching um, uh, to, to our addresses and uh, it's not only my life, but also my family life right now is in danger. And also not only me as a women's rights activist, but other women's rights activists' lives also in, in badly in danger. And unfortunately right now, none of us, we cannot go anywhere because there's a no commercial flight. We were not been working with the U.S. military or U.K. military. So for that is also is another kind of punishment. Since we've been a civilian and we have to keep our civilian side mm. and we are not priority for anyone, to help us and, and to protect us and, I just and wonder, there's no police address that if anything happened for us to go and address or uh, submit our complaint mm. so it's like totally we are being again inside of a cage uh, and again uh, we are facing more 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 threat than before because before our identity was not being clear to the taliban but right now they know our name our face our address uh, our phone numbers, everything. And I just wonder, what do a mother and a father say to their daughter who has grown up in an Afghanistan where women and girls have been allowed to get an education, to go to work, freedoms to go out and about as they please? What, how do they explain that to this generation now, seeing their country it's, turn it's, so it's, quickly in such a short space of time? It's hard, it's hard for me. What, what should I say to my daughters? and to their generation, why they are not able to go to school or university or continue their study what they like to and what they wish to. Why Afghanistan should be a marginalized piece from the entire world? Why the great religious in the world with the name of Islam should be a stick to be always been beating women by that? So this, those are the questions which is, I believe the international community should find answer for it because Afghanistan was been smashed and used during the Cold War with the name of Islamist group. And this is how we are paying again the same as the uh, Cold War result. So again, the Islamism uh, are not all about Islam. It's more political Islam. So when we are talking about the political and mm. different interpretation from Islam, so those groups are uh, stopping women from their own Islamic rights under the name of Islam. I think it's very hard for any parent because there's a no excuse. Today's generation wants to grow up with the world globally. It's hard for us to explain for them why they cannot go to school, why they are not will mm. be able to be like other girls in the world or like other boys in the world, mm. because those limitations are not only for girls, it will also continue for the boys as well. Yes. Um, who do you look to for hope? What can be done to help, if anything? Hey, well, even right now when I'm raising my voice, this is the great help, that I want to deliver that message worldwide. The consequence of peace that we were been waiting and campaigning for that in the last three years uh, shouldn't be uh, again the dark age for Afghanistan. This is, I think, the, the only weapon the women of Afghanistan has, I think, to write and to raise up. But this is also will cost us extremely high price. Not only our life, but our family members' life will be in danger. Well, we, so if we continue that, it means we will, we, we will pay by our own life because freedom of expression, freedom of speech, free media, having women on the TV, these are, those are not the rules that Taliban will accept and continue with that. Well, given, given the risk to your, your own personal safety, um, sincerely, thank you very much for speaking to us.